Welcome back. We've just been discussing this idea of profound knowledge. Now what I'd like to do is build on that concept and say, how do we go in that search for profound knowledge? That was what we were actually doing with the exploratory data analysis. And so the principle by which we're using to peel back the onion, as we've been saying, is called stratification and decomposition. So we're going back to understand different rational subgroups, and we're going to try to break the problem into different pieces. Dr. Duran noted that there are some different factors about processes. He said often a single factor will dominate a contribution of one factor or one uh, performance component to the overall process. Physical process, we can see usual performance of dominance, such as setup time uh, in terms of the dominance. Maybe it's time dominance in terms of the process. Maybe it's component dominance in terms of the things going into it. Worker dominance in terms of the work that's happening. Or information dominance in terms of how we understand how the process should be put together. Each of those different types of processes has a different degree of uh, control and a different approach to how we control it. So one of the things we need to understand is how can we really get the characteristics of that process defined? Well, when we look at a process and we start characterizing the waste, as we did, and we put that output then into the Yamazumi diagram in our exploratory data analysis, what we start finding is there's really two different things happening in a process activity. There's the activity step that's producing a result and there's also usually some sort of test function saying, how well was the quality of that work? And if the quality of the work did not actually live up to the expectation, we may have a rework cycle. And sometimes in that rework cycle, we may scrap things before we actually create the new process with the new output that actually meets the requirements. The problem is when we take a look at processes, this extra loop is called the hidden factory. These are things that are not actually costed in activity-based costing. They are not actually costed in terms of poor cost of poor quality because we don't see them as part of the normal process. These are part of the risk and failure loops that happen that add to the process. In standard cost accounting, what happens with these is these are added into the process as an allocated cost. Many times we see them going into overhead or we see them going into variation in terms of the um, material cost variations. So what happens is we need to break down the process and understand every component that's there. Now, Dr. Ishikawa, Kuru Ishikawa, was trying to do this in the 1950s, and he came up with a diagram called the fishbone diagram. What he was trying to do was to map what Dr. Kano calls the characteristic quality factors in the process to determine how the process is creating value. The original contribution that he was trying to make was, how do we do analysis of the process functions to break them down into the component elements? Now his translator didn't really understand how to say that right, so David Liu, who translated his work, called that cause and effect analysis. But in reality, it's not about causal relationships. It's about breaking factors in processes into small areas, small functional components. So it's this decomposition that we see that's happening. And so we can see that there are really seven different categories of things that might be decomposed out of a particular process. And when we take a look at these factors, we see sometimes they could be called the seven M. So one factor is the material. Another is the method. Another is mother nature, the machinery in the system the manpower in the system, the measurements used, as well as the money that it takes to invest or the costs that are consumed. And all of that combined together creates the desirable output in the process. So as we're looking at a process, one of the things we can do is we can break that process down using this sort of fishbone diagram and say, here's the head, this is the process, here are those seven M's, and then we can classify the different observable functions and features of the process according to each of those or subcategories of those. This is what we mean by process decomposition. We should be able in a complete fishbone diagram to see all the different things that go into that process. Now, in Six Sigma, we can also classify each of those as a, a, a noise, or is it something that we can actually say is something that we can understand how to control? So if controllable, we can label it as a C. If it's noise, an N. 
those factors that are controllable that actually contribute to the variation will become process X's. The head of the fishbone is like the Y of the diagram. So in a sense, what we've done is we've created a, a graphical view of Y is a function of a lot of potential X's. And this is one way that we can graph the system. Now, that was designed in the 1950s. If we're to redesign the same sort of te technique or methodology today, we might consider a mind map. So if you want to think about this, one thing you might want to use is using a mind map as a way to break down the system into different functional components. The only difference is rather than free-forming the whole mind map, around the center of the mind map you would have those seven structures for the seven M's. So we're going to think about how to use this methodology when we get into the measure step to give us some understanding. What are the functions that we need to address for improvement in the process?